Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Fatih Allah wa Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum <coughs> And always a reminder from myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalim, jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence in the holy month of Zulqidah and the reality of 11 Garm sharif that our Qadari brothers and sisters that's so important for the love because these are the servants of Qadr and power. Anyone reflecting that reality of one and from the oceans of the reality of that oneness is dressed by a Divinely power. Last night in the Aina and the reality of the shining of our soul. So our soul is a mirror and what we do with it is going to have a reflection. If we do bad to it, it reflects the badness to our home, to our environment, to our communities. And Allah encourages the one whom cleans it, purifies it and raises it is a supreme triumph. So then Allah inspires those whom He granted a, a gift of love, they go sit with them, these are the masters of washing the soul. They will teach you how to wash and purify, cleanse and scrub with their zikrs, with their teachings, with their associations, with everything that Allah has made for them their associations and facilitated for them, it's a cleaning environment. Scrubbing, deep cleaning, deep issues. And we said as a reminder, the one with no mirror sees nothing of themselves. And Allah Ayatul Kareem is describing, have you seen those who make their Lord, their desire their Lord? Because it's not that they're worshipping Allah they're bowing down to their nafs and to their desires because they're not seeing the characteristic and they're continuing. That's why you say, how that guy prays he's so angry, how that person gives and they're, they're, they're so corrupt. There's something in their nafs they're bowing down to for had they bowed down to Allah he would have changed them. Could you be bowing down to Allah and you're not changing? So then the Aina is saying, oh maybe you are bowing down to your nafs, you're happy with your action, just fulfilled with who you are and you don't want to listen to them where they say, sit and begin to reflect, look, meditate, contemplate, what did I do wrong? What did I say wrong? Only me, not what other people did wrong, what did I do wrong? And I meditate, as soon as I appear to these shaykhs and interact and email and deal and watch them, it is a mirror from the Divinely Presence, from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and then they teach you meditate and contemplate because when you activate that Divinely mirror their arwa, their soul is present with you. So we said their soul is like the mirror. If you want to go before a Divinely mirror ask for the madad and support of these shaykhs. As soon as you ask or as soon as you look at their photo their mirror is appearing. And what you don't like is what you're seeing, it will begin to reflect to you who you are, what your character is like, what are your defects and your faults. And this is one mirror you can't lie to because that's why Disney made the reverse of it, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most beautiful one of them all? Because that dunya mirror that Disney was teaching is dunya mirror, it says, you are. And it was a shaitan in the mirror, it was a witch in the mirror. And Allah says they plan and Allah's planning better. So even in their corrupt industry Allah giving a sharat in that. Do you see how that shaitan is in that mirror convincing that person they are the most beautiful? 
the beauty that you see from your Instagram and your Facebook and all of that, you think shaitan is telling you you're beautiful for dunya? And the painted mannequins and devils of uh, Hollywood where they hide their death and their stench with their makeup because they're rotten, rotten hearts, they're painted witches. The beauty of the soul is what makes somebody beautiful. When Allah looking into the mirror of a precious soul, all the world is intoxicated because of the beauty that reflects. That's what we're in search of is the Divinely mirrors that reflect a Divine truth and a Divine beauty. And when we look to them, deal with them, interact for them, our ugliness appears, our anger and our rage. All of those Allah saying, that's the ugly mannequin, are you going to fix that? Whatever you think the mirror is doing to you is irrelevant, but what is the reaction of the reflection? Fix yourself before the world will fix you and Allah will fix you. That's very dangerous. What's the expression? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Before you wreck yourself. Why all these expressions? I mean, go to the mirror, check it, do an accounting. I have rage, I have anger, I have jealousy, I have all these characteristics, and I have to work on them. I have to know my sickness, I have to work on them. That's for you looking at the mirror tonight. What does the mirror look at? So it means from the level of the shaykh that's the hadith al-Qudsi that when they polish, they polish, they polish Allah then described that they did their fard. These are people whom of course they pray ridiculous comments sometimes they go, oh you Sufis don't pray, don't pray. I think we don't think you don't pray. Naqshbandiya keeps the 50 prayers that Prophet brought from the heavens, brought it and they said it's going to be too much and then Prophet began to reduce it. But Naqshbandiya and the wazifa they keep the 50 salah a day from their tahajjud, their, their shukr, their salat al tasbih, all, all of them. You'll see it on the app all the list of their salah, they don't pray, they pray too much, alhamdulillah. Means that when they completed all their fard, all of obligatory worshipness and Allah saw within them good character, granted their soul equals mirror, sincerity and ikhlas. That mirror is now dressed by this hadith al-Qudsi, I become the hearing in which this servant, the seeing, the breathing, the hands means miyad and my support upon their hands and the feet that they don't move without my permission. Whether you know it, you don't know it, you wonder, how come you don't make a decision? How come you went here, you went back? Say, don't get involved, it's none of your business. Where Allah sends us, Allah sends us. Where Allah retreats us is Allah retreating. Their movement is not based on anyone, it's based on what Allah opened for them, they move. Even if they move into a fire, they move into a fire, maybe Allah wants it to be cool and peaceful and brought down. Means everything about their mirror is hadith al-Qudsi. So much so that you are Rabbaniyoon and you have kun fayakun, why? Because a mirror of course has kun fayakun, who's the one speaking through the mirror? Is them? Is, does the mirror ever talk to you? Unless you're crazy. Maybe if you know you lost your mind you go to a mirror and you think the mirror is talking to you, and, oh, hey, what's going on? Have you seen those scary videos? But the person's looking and the one in the mirror is going, ah. <laughs> that's a different, that's a different talk, that's the spooky ghost talk. But normally when you <laughs> look at the mirror, it's not uh, the mirror talking to you. So the mirror to you is the shaykh, 
But the shaykh's mirror is to his shaykhs and to Prophet So I mean who's speaking through them and reflecting and that's their great mystery. Who's hearing through that mirror, who sees through that mirror? What power comes through the hands of that mirror and the step and, and the qadam of that mirror? That's why then the tariqah is based on adab and manners. That you're entering into the presence of a mirror, you don't know that night or throughout the night who's looking through that mirror. And when they look through their tajalli comes out, when they look through they see through the eyes of their servant, their servant because they have entered into the ocean Alaihi wa sallimu taslim, not taslima, taslim that they submitted. As a result of their taslim they became taslima, they became beautiful. You're hoping to become taslima. But how you can become taslim if you're not taslim? How can you be beautific if you're not submitting? So their haqqaiq and their reality was Allah submit to Prophet Their entire arwah and soul samina wa ta'ana and Allah guided them to the ulur am who are the walking mirrors of Prophet upon this earth. Feekum. That's why in the, to- in the talks of feekum Allah says in Qur'an that Prophet is amongst you and the tafsir is within you. That for the awliya he's within them, for the common people the awliya are amongst you. And the wilayat is the Muhammadan light, there's no other light. 124,000 awliyaullah upon this earth and they're all Muhammadiyoon. Now I don't know how many of them know themselves, many, many, many don't. But when they know themselves they cannot be anything but Muhammadiyoon because there's no three, there's no Allah Muhammad Rasulullah and Babaji, no three. Just one, La ilaha illallah only reflects to Muhammadun Rasulullah That's it, awliyaullah are in the ishq and love of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result they are reflecting, reflecting, being reflected upon. What you see of them and what you love of them is the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah So as they raise their darajat, their juzbah and the attraction that people have to them is from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Depending upon their proximity and the level of their cleanliness their juzbah begin to emanate strong. Based on their firasal, again each, we said in, in the Kamil Shaykh that the Kamil of Sayyidina Muhammad is that every faculty Allah has dressed. So when the Kamil come that Prophet gives Hadith al-Qudsi to them that are giving you from my ears 10%. Until you listen, listen, listen and that's why their lives are so difficult, so tested, so smashed because it went from 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% all the way up to what Prophet wound that their soul hears and it listens and it obeys. Then all their faculties, same with their basir, their vision. Not the physical eyes but eye within their heart. So all of these realities Prophet is dressing their soul, dressing their mirror. As a result of the strength of that mirror what it reflects on to a dunya. Now they're trying to make a fake sun. Say if you don't study the sun and you don't study the moon you're an empty headed person. Because as soon as we start talking about reality you say, no, no, it's from Allah. 
come on that's such a, an empty expression. Allah will call you to account that you didn't understand my creation, I created this like for a joke for you. Weren't you astonished by the power of the stun? What type of qudra I gave that? You didn't understand what the moon was? And every inhabitant on earth has to understand that on an earth and their life is based on a sun and a moon. If there's no sun, you're dead on this earth. If there was no moon, you'd have no growth on this earth. So these haqqaiqs all are important for who we are. Don't just say, Allah. Allah said, I created this beautific creation, you don't study it? You don't try to find its haqqaiq and its reality? When Allah said, thank me for Anjeer and for Anar, for Habij, those were really simple. What about thanking Allah for the immensity of this amazing creation? Then we understand these haqqaiqs. If we need the sun to become rushed, to become healthy, to breathe, photosynthesis doesn't happen without that sun. You don't breathe and the plants don't produce oxygen, the sun, that's how Allah created this. If that's an imitated light and the real sun is the light of Sayyidina Muhammad You don't breathe without his light. If the fake sun is doing that, imagine the real sun. That's why these nasheeds that your sun outdoes everything, even your green dome of Medina outdoes all the lights of all the suns, it's not even comparison. So when you study the science of it, you'll understand more the reality of Prophet You can't see without sunlight. So it means this Nurul Muhammad if it doesn't enter into your eyes you have no vision. You'd be blind in dunya and blind in akhirah. Without that light you don't breathe, without that light you don't eat, without that light nothing happen. Then the light of the moon is all you're growing, all vegetation is growing because of moonlight. The moon power comes and the ocean tides are moving. The water of this earth moves based on this movement of this uh, moon. What do you think the moon does to you and your blood? What we call the maniac because the full moon make everybody crazy and all the hospitals are full. All doctors know that full moon is crazy time, all the ERs are full, all police know. Because the light that's coming from that moon, it's such a powerful energy that the shaitans are all running because it's a heavenly light. And Allah put every Dracula movie to show you shaitans they cannot operate in the sunlight, they operate in the darkness of shadows, means they can never operate in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because the nur haqq when it comes. You think shaitan can hide in front of him or he runs and shaitan hides for a corner where there's a shadow where that light is not reflecting to them, there's a isharat and a guidance in everything. That's why Allah shows in every movie the bad they don't come into the sunlight. And we need the moonlight and the reflection for our growth. Then we now go down to the next level and say that if these mirrors are reflecting Sayyidina Muhammad light. Then you understand why the hadith on kutubs and awliya and ahlul bayt. They say the movement of these awliyaullah bring the rain and vegetation upon the earth and people are like, what are you talking about? If the sun is doing it and Allah wa laqad karamna bani adam that I love your creation, I love it more than a sun and a moon. That sun and the moon are like ornaments I put up in the sky to be beautific but they have immense realities. But you, your reality is far more immense that the angels were perplexed by you. The angels weren't astonished about the earth and the moon, the sun, the planets and the galaxy but they say, why you made this guy the khalifa? He's going to make so much fitna on this earth. They were astonished with what Allah is giving 
of authority. Their souls bring rain upon the earth, bring blessing upon the earth. Their souls cause many things to grow, many things to blossom, many realities to begin to happen. If the sun is doing it, imagine the souls of these awliyaullah who they reflect the Muhammadan haqqaiq. That's why then the tariqah is based on adab. The tariqah teaches adab and manners so that we enter into the presence of these mirrors with the goodness of the character. In the presence of that mirror it reflects its beauty. And all the mirror wants is that come with an open heart, come with good character so that it can reflect its beauty. And what shaitan wants? When you go into the presence of the mirror become anger to have bad character like a flower that you closed. As soon as the flower closed in the presence of a sun it didn't receive any of its nutrients, it didn't receive any of its tajallis, it didn't receive any of its barakah and blessings for had it opened and received the sunlight what the, is the proof? The flower gives its beautiful smell. It's so happy with the tajalli means the ishq and the love that emanates from the heart of that servant is a fragrance more powerful than flowers. And that's the game. Shaitan want to anger the people, close your flower because now this sunlight is about to shine. And our reality is keep your heart open, understand what shaitan is doing, have the best of manners, the best of characteristics to receive these emanations and these tajallis. We pray that Allah give us a, a heart in which to ponder. Mm -hmm. These talks come, you write your notes and then the next few days you're pondering them. The ya Rabbi what is the importance of the sun? How is this power? Who powers it? This sun is Allah's sign of eternity. This sun that we look at is the same sun that Sayyidina Adam saw. It has always been there, always doing the same job. Do you think that there was a time that Sayyidina Muhammad was not around? Or he says, I was a Rasul before Adam was between clay and water. My light has, has eternally been everywhere. So every asharat we look at all these symbols, Allah just said, I show you these evidence and these proofs within yourself and upon the horizon. Horizon is easier because once you understand the horizon you begin to understand the depth of what Allah has put within our own being. We have a galaxy within our own being, we have a sun right here but it's not lit. We have a moon right here but it's not reflecting anything from here, it's thinking it's a sun. Everyone has it reversed now. The heart is dead like a moon, nothing in it, nothing on it does nothing and their head is like a sun thinking, talking and too much. When it was supposed to be the reverse, you were supposed to open up the heart with Divinely light and Divinely presence. You were supposed to follow the shaykhs to shut your head. And that's why the first zikr, La ilaha illallah, La it means no, La ilaha illallah, up, right, left, up, right, left, up, you bring that qudra, no head. Don't use that head, not at all. Why? So that the head become bombarded like the moon, that every test that coming, oh, oh, you fight your head, don't fight your heart. Fight your head until it been hit so many times with these rocks, your head like a moon, absolutely shut off. Ding. Then Allah will ignite the heart, you're not trying to use your head. And when the heart is ignited means it burning, it's caught fire and every haqqaiq begins to reflect onto the head because the head is now submitting to the heart. So dunya has it the reverse, they have nothing in their heart and, and they're using their face and their mouths like it's a sun.
They're trying to compute everything. When you hear their talks on YouTube, all of these intellectual people, it's the head is so powerful we can do, we can do what, what do they call this uh, vision where they have the… they sit in a room and they can visualize far away, remote viewing. We're going to do remote viewing with our head, we sit, mm, what's in the sky is a helicopter is moving like How much they give authority to the head is completely the wrong understanding. The negation of the head and the opening of the sun and the heart. And with that Allah open ulum al awwaleen wa akhireen because your eternal reality is tapping into Allah's eternal power. The same power that is dressing that sun, more powerful is dressing your heart. And all its knowledges, all its realities, all its blessings, every faiz is now emanating, emanating from that heart. And then begin to reflect through all their faculties and all the eleven organs within their being. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.